we did this when um, you were just about to begin graduate school. Mm -hmm. And so I must have been, I don't know, what, five or six years into teaching, mm -hmm. right? And now she is almost done with graduate school. I am full professor now. <laughs> a full <laughs> professor now. Um, and I think we were just chatting about what it was Diana's idea. They said, "Well, we we did this, you know, at this point, and we should we should do it, do it again." And I said that what I wanted to hear from her is she was. I remember sort of her initial excitement about graduate school. So I want to know, I want to know what what it's like now. You know, what are you still excited about? What are you newly excited about? What have you learned? And so, I, and then she said, "Well, what what has changed for you?" and has anything changed for you? And for me, I think what has happened is I just the more I more I sit with this, you know, whether it's in my research lab or with my students or just in my life, sort of the more um, kind of the the larger and more surprising it becomes, right? And this um, at one point, like everyone else, I kind of started learning this stuff as these cool cells and what do they do? And now, of course, it's sort of how the world works, you know, and it is a lens like any other lens to understand how the world works. And it's not just about what I do in the classroom or in the research lab, it's how I teach generally, how I think about the world and society and violence and peace and all of these things and borders, you know, and so, so that's what I was saying. So I don't know, that's kind of where we are. The more time I spent in graduate school, the more excited I got because everything around me points to this being a fantastic time to be an immunologist because we have all these disciplines coming together to solve critical complex questions. Um, so yeah, still very much excited. But what graduate school has taught me in a way is also that there's a lot that I still don't know and a lot that I still have to learn. So in a way it's also been a humbling experience too. Um, and I'm really excited for the next step. Yeah, I mean, that's constant though, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm every day there are things I don't know. There's uh, three things I learned from your talk that I didn't <laughs> know, so. <laughs> I've learned from her as I learned from my students, and if I didn't, then it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be fun for me, you know? And um, of course, as, as someone like Diana sort of just is more out there in this world of discovery and closer to its cutting edge, there are, um, sort of facts and concepts that she uh, gets to know and discovers and, and figures out before I do and maybe some before other people do and I get to learn those from her. But I think that with every student, you know, you discover kind of the field along with them as they discover it and you learn something from their enthusiasm or you learn something from their successes or you learn something from their mistakes. And so um, that's just a constant, right? Because otherwise you just teach the same class over and over again, it'd be so boring. But because it's not, you know, because there are all these people who bring these questions and curiosity and accomplishments and mistakes with them, like it's always, always about learning. So this is not the beginning, nor will it be the end of learning from you. <laughs> um, yeah. I was tasked with writing a syllabus for my fictional immunology class. And I just thought back to yours, and yours was certainly, you know, the foundation of mine. And I thought about how you organize a class and how you don't insist on having exams, but rather having problem sets where, honestly, an open book is not going to help you much because you, it's about how you integrate all these various different concepts and how you apply them and put them into practice. So I would certainly keep that aspect because that has been critical for me in graduate school too and your emphasis on reading the primary literature for the data that's presenting that's presenting in that literature. I still remember for our first class, you cut up a paper, gave us the figures, the figure legends and said, here, write the abstract. I still do that. <laughs> and it's so <laughs> fantastic because it really pushes us to critically evaluate the data that's presented and not take for granted what is written. Um, and that is that is how I read the primal literature now. I just go to the data. I you just cut it up. Not necessarily <laughs> <laughs> like that, but yeah. but that's I mean that practice has been 
Incredible. So in the Bhavani's lab, I was studying allergy and specifically how repeated allergic responses can drive tissue remodeling and pain. And so allergy is a condition in which immune tolerance goes wrong. And now in graduate school, I have been studying another one of those instances, but it's autoimmunity. So the thread is very similar, but the perspective is different. And what I hope to do next is cancer immunotherapy, again, a condition in which immune tolerance is, exists, and we are trying really hard to break it. So that thread has been, I think, a constant in my career, and that is definitely something that I will continue to study. But I have learned so much from, you know, using the flow cytometer for the first time to now generating sophisticated reagents to track one in a million cells. So it has been a very steep learning curve and it's been so exciting. And also it showed me what it is that I don't know and what I have yet to learn, so. And the other thing is that, you know, you have continued to be a collaborator, right? You have continued to be a collaborator and we're lucky well, I've been very lucky that she um, hasn't been very far away. So she's just been, you know, across the river. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been wonderful to have you sort of as a continued intellectual partner in, in, in our work. But also, you've been such a wonderful role model to the many, many students in the lab who've uh, come after you. and. Um, and you are not, you're not a stranger in our lab. Like everyone knows who Tiana is. You know, you help us out with, um, well, the flow cytometer, right? <laughs> you have been very generous with that, but I think it's more than that. It's more than sort of the sophisticated machine and the, and mm -hmm. the cool technique that, you know, you're able to do in, in the lab and the students can go and do their experiments and use your cool machine. It's just having you as this role model you know, then this mentor and this person who shares the experience of our lab, but has now gone on to do other things. And um, so I think that that has been, it is just your, your um, growth as a, as a mentor and role model has been really remarkable in that way.